Okay, so welcome to the Planning Commission meeting of September 15, 2021, and um, I want to say first and foremost, thank you all very much for uh, coming here. I know we have items that are important to the community on the agenda today, and um, the first thing I really need to do is um, provide you with an update. Uh, the applicant for item number three, which is the um, parcel 112 at the end of uh, Via Grande Road, uh, that applicant, Mr. Nasiri, has requested a continuation of the hearing, and that continuation will occur on the evening of Wednesday, November 17th at the November Planning Commission meeting. Um, however, in light of the fact that so many of you have taken of your time to uh, come here this evening to be heard on the matter. We are still going to hold the, um, at least start the public hearing this evening to provide you an opportunity to uh, speed those that want to, to speak on the matter. And in addition, I want to reemphasize that during the meeting of November 17th, uh, there will also, it will also be a public hearing and so you'll have an opportunity to speak on the 17th as well if you choose not to uh, say your piece this evening. Um, and the reason for the, con the requested continuation is to provide Mr. Nasiri, uh, in light of the many comments that the city has received, Mr. Nasiri would like to meet with you um, as a community, I understand that I think all of you are here for this agenda item three. I um, would like to speak with you, hear your concerns, and um, have an opportunity to just discuss, you know, discuss those concerns with you. Um, so with that, I'm going to continue on in the agenda of the meeting. And so the first item of business for me is confirmation and posting. Um, I want to read into the record that this meeting was posted in accordance with the uh, open meeting laws and we have all planning commission members here so we do in fact have a quorum. And with that, let's go to the Pledge of Allegiance please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. That brings us to the first public comment period. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, there will be a public comment period during the hearing um, when we do open up item three for discussion. Uh, but you are certainly free to comment now. Uh, comments during this portion of the agenda will be limited to matters on the agenda for action. Each person who would like to speak has up to five minutes on a specific agenda item. And of course, as I just mentioned, if it's listed as a public hearing, which this item is, you may wait to speak until that particular item comes up. And... Would you mind introducing yourself and who you are so we know? All right. My name's Paul Matuska, um, and I'm the chairman of the Planning Commission here in Boulder City. I've been on the Planning Commission for 15 years. Um, and been a resident of the city for 30 years. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm kind of looking for the phone number that folks, uh, I was going to make a note about, ah, uh, there we are. I'm sorry. That's right. I'm actually jumping beyond public comment. Would anyone in the audience wish to be heard on this matter 
at this moment or heard on any matter on the agenda at this moment. Yes, sir. My name is Carl Fox. I live in that community. Can and uh, mic, what? Speak the mic. Oh. My name is Carl Fox, and I live in that community. And I've been a builder and a developer for about 40 years. And uh, it, it's the idea that, and he put it pretty blankly, he, he had 10 years trying to sell that, and he can't sell it. So now if he can get it, so he can do three times as many houses then he can move the land. That's all, that's all he's after. He's probably already got it sold. It's just uh, if he can get it rezoned. And, and it's, it's not going to enhance anything or make anything better. It's just going to get him off the hook on owning that land and he can't sell it. This is, this is bottom line. Is he's got a piece of property that he bought zoned. The zoning hasn't changed. And he bought it that way, and now he finds out he can't sell it that way. So now he's going, he comes to you and says, well, if you rezone this, then I can get my money, and I can leave. That's all this is about. This is not doing anything else. Just make it more, more uh, advantageous to sell. The, pro the property isn't worth what he wants for it unless they can put 20 houses or more on it. I looked at the property. I. Uh, and even thought about buying it, and it doesn't pencil out that way. <clears throat> the only way it works is if somebody buys it and wants to do a big, big mansion or big estate. But to think you can develop that and put six houses in, and then and then build the houses and then try to sell them, it, there's no way. So this is just about economics. He just wants to have a property that will sell, where he knows he's got a property that won't sell. Because it just the way the way it pencils out is that six houses, eleven acres, and about a million and a half dollars in improvements. So anyway, that's why I, I just think it's just about him wanting to sell his property. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Please, yeah. So maybe I should. I apologize that's okay. for. Um, oh, well, hold for one second. Sorry. Um, what I want to do is just make a make a general comment. So, if you choose to speak either now or later, um, do as this woman has done. Come to the podium, state your name, and then move forward. Thank you. May I My ask name. One thing? Sure. If you could please also state which item you're referring to one for the just, record. This gentleman just spoke about. Is okay. that item three? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Item three. I am just curious. Um, my name is Kathleen Johnson. I'm a resident of Lake Mead View Estates. And I'm just curious if any of you gentlemen on the planning committee have been down to see this property. Have you all? Okay. Because it seems like, like this gentleman said, an impossible task to to actually build houses in its current form. Uh, it's very hilly and so on and so forth. Also, it would be a great interference with the people that live in the surrounding area on um, those two streets. Um, also, we are an association that protects uh, the view of all of the people that live in the community. That's why it's called Lake Mead View Estates. Um, so, without some kind of control over what this gentleman is going to do to the property as far as building homes um, or whatever he was planning, it would in fact be an issue for the people in the community and an interference of their views perhaps unless we have some kind of control over heights and so on. So that would be my comment about rezoning. I would think it's foolish to rezone, but also foolish to allow building there without some kind of control and um, consideration of the other homeowners who have been there for some time. Thank you. Thank you.
Would anyone else like to be heard at this time? My name is Emmett Stevenson. Uh, I had a unique part of uh, participation in this about uh, I don't know, eight or ten years ago. Mr. Nasiri called me to try to sell me that land. And part of his sales pitch was that it only had five homes on it and they would be nice and big and, and in keeping with the community. Uh, I didn't buy it because the numbers didn't make any sense, but I thought I'd let you know that uh, he was using that as a sale point rather than uh, a, a more densely occupied piece of land. Interesting. Thank you. What's up? Uh, my name is Barry Gold. I am a past president of the Homeowners Association in Lake Meadview Estates. And I would echo everything uh, Mr. Fox and uh, Mr. Uh, Stevenson said. However, uh, I also live on Stone Canyon uh, Road, as he does. And when we purchased the house over a decade ago, one of the selling points, again, was the lot behind us was a maximum of roughly five or six houses. Uh, and so we were kind of sold the house with that understanding and that knowledge. And I believe that uh, changing it from five or six houses to 20 or more doesn't make a lot of sense for the 255 lots in Lake Meadview Estates. So the negative impact of the homes, I think, greatly outweighs the, the benefit to Mr. Nasiri. I mean, if you're looking at one individual with a lot that he purchased many years ago for a, a certain mm -hmm. amount with a certain zoning restriction, and now try to change it because he can't sell it, doesn't make a lot of sense. And I'd like to think that the the recommendation from the Planning Commission would understand these things and realize that uh, doing something that is likely not beneficial to the community at large doesn't make a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Daryl Fruing. I own the uh, property at 109 Stone Canyon Road, which is uh, frequently or sometimes called the Bowling Alley House with the large statues in front. I have owned that uh, property 30 years ago, 30 years this year, with the understanding and knowledge when we purchased it that it was zoned uh, R180. I'm a sizable developer in California, understanding this. I, like the people before me, said it just wasn't economical building five or six homes there to be able to build down there and make any money. Knowing, I mean, meaning it, knowing that in fact it needed to have its own change and constantly being told, and I'm not saying by this group, but people from the city that I've been in contact with, chances are that'll never happen. With that being said, we built our particular home, and my wife and I are in our 80s, love the area. We have other places to go, nothing matches what we have here in Boulder City on Stone Canyon Road. It would be disturbing to see any change. If I may approach the table up there, I'd like to give you a photo of what we see daily. My wife and I came in last night for this special meeting to be able to articulate our view, what we feel about this. And if I give you this picture, or this photo, 
if I may, uh, come up there. I'd like to show it to you. For you to see what we get to see every day. Nothing has changed in the 26 years that we have built. It's still, what a thrill to come and go to the back of our house and look over at the lake. May I come up front, please? Sir, do you have a copy for all of the commissioners? I have a copy for everybody. Okay, and then do you have one for me as well? Of course I do. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, for it. I hope it's true what I say. I think it is. Thank you. Here's our backyard, what we get to see on a daily basis. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Thank you for coming in. Oh, man. I mean, this is the photograph that's being shared. Holly, could you uh, zoom in on that or any of that? We'll cover my reflective head. Ooh. In conclusion, particularly in our area, and I'm not excluding anyone, uh, and but particularly Stone Canyon Road, we're all seniors. This is nothing about money. As somebody said, they could, or looked at maybe purchasing this and do the same thing. I think there's a few of us could do that. But I'll tell you, to turn that into dollars would be an absolute shame. And we look to you guys, ladies, I'm sorry, ma'am, to help us out and keep this the way it is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My name's Diana Keene. I live in the area that's gonna be affected by um, this development if it happens. We do not live on Stone Canyon Road, but we share the uh, feeling, the admiration for the lake, the views, and for Boulder City. My husband and I at length have discussed our community here in Boulder City since we moved here. We love the area, we love the uh, small town feel, and we can't see how this benefits Boulder City at all. I mean, I'm sure you guys have numbers and other information that maybe we don't have, but as a community, it's gonna affect um, the infrastructure, sewer, and most importantly, the water, which is at a record low. And those are the things that concern me as a resident of Boulder City. Not so much just a resident of Lake Mead Estates, although I'm very proud to live there, but more so how it's going to impact Boulder City. I mean, we still have rather high water bills, electric bills, gas bills, and the community of Boulder City is aging, so a lot of our community members are seniors. And I'd hate to think that the city would put whatever meager means it tends to cultivate from changing this and bringing 20, 24 additional homes that are gonna tax our water, our sewer, everything else that all of us have moved to Boulder City to have. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not very good at public speaking, sorry. I'm Fabrian Bowman, I live on Villa Grande, and I bought my house because I wanted to get away from the chaos of my house in Las Vegas. 
I loved the fact that this was already an established community. I am concerned about the amount of traffic for the amount of time that might happen to allow for the 3% um, growth a year. This might have to get stretched over a certain amount of time. And I personally don't want all the dump trucks, all the construction, all the infrastructure going up and down my road for six plus years potentially. That frightens me. I can already hear the workers across the way at the uh, waterway that they're doing. Every morning they're yelling and screaming and it bounces off my house. I, I just, I want it to stay peaceful. I honestly am concerned about the amount of water that might get used too. I took out 2,000 square feet of lawn in my front yard to conserve water. I just would really like him to have to stay at the zone he bought it at, please. Thank you. Thank you. Doug Shepman, 832 Temple Rock Court. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and mem members of the Planning Commission and city staff for hearing us tonight. We greatly appreciate the time. I'm not going to be real repetitive on a lot of the things it says. It's hard to follow Mr. Fruing because I don't have any pass pan handouts to give to you and so forth. I thought he did a good job as to what it represents for him in this particular area. What I would like to address, though, is that in last count, I counted over 30 individual privately owned lots that are available for sale, either for sale or the owner would sell in Boulder City currently. So there's a lot of lots available currently that people can build a single family home on if they're interested in doing that. I think the main issue here really boils down to what many of the speakers have talked about is the inability for him to develop that property as it is. And with your action, if you do approve this thing, in essence what you're doing is you're substantially increasing the marketability of this particular parcel of land and you're also a substantially increase in the value of the land for him to sell or develop whichever way he wants to do it. And really, I don't think the city wants to get into that business. You're not acting as a sales agent for this particular person. You're acting as what can represent the interest of the majority of residents here in Boulder City, and particularly that area. So I appreciate your time, and I hope this does get heard on November 17th and you take the appropriate action. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, very good. With that, let's move on to the... I'm sorry? The phone number? Yes. Let's move on to the phone number. So those who would wish to, who may be uh, trying to watch this or, you know, from home or um, stream it, uh, the phone number to provide comments. Um, and at this point, so I'm going to ask a question of staff. Is it appropriate if I would extend this, com this comment period for the lag once I give the phone number? in case someone would like to call in now. Yes, and then when we're done with that, when you are finished with the phone lines, I also have public comments to read. Ah, thank you, okay. Um, so for anyone who's streaming this from home or other location, um, the number to call into to provide comments is area code 702-589-9673. Again, 702-589-9629. And we'll give approximately a minute for folks to call in due to the lag. Are we completed with the numbers? 
or can we start on a different item? Oh, we have not yet completed the public, the general public comment period. We'll be beginning agenda items one through five here in just a couple of minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, we'll uh, move on to the written comments. Tammy, if you'd like to read those into the record. Thank you. The first is regarding item number two, submitted by Delwyn Hobbin. He says he fully supports this and hopes it goes through. Unlike the failed heliport venture, this will not cause any noise for the uncaring neighbors. Thank you, Delwyn Hobbin. Next is regarding item number three. Dear planning commissioners, I wanted to reach out to you regarding the commission meeting this Wednesday where the proposed zone change in front of Stone Canyon and Lake Meadview Estates will be discussed. Unfortunately, I cannot attend the meeting. However, I would like you to note my serious concerns and hope that this will not be granted by the planning commission. I agree with Kirk Harrison and the thoughts he shared in his letter dated September 9, 2021. I am opposed to the rezoning and feel it would certainly be detrimental to Lake Meadview Estates as well as the residents living within the community. The impact for the neighboring residents in a custom home community could be devastating and certainly needs to be the main consideration. Thank you for your time and help in this matter, Amber Bartholomew. And that's all I have. Thank Mr. you very much. Mr. Chairman, if also for the benefit of the audience and those who may be watching, um, what the city clerk just read were the comments that came in through a certain portal on the website. All of, there were several other emails and letters that we received. Those have all been copied to commissioners in advance of the meeting, and we have those on file, and they will also be included um, in the packet when this returns next month. So we're not ignoring those comments. We're just letting the public know we did receive them as did the planning commission. And they will be uploaded to the packet, tonight's packet within 24 hours and available on our website. Thank you very much for that additional information. I appreciate that. Um, so let's move forward to agenda item Number one, and this is for possible action. This is approval of the minutes of the May 19th, 2021 regular meeting. Do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the minutes. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. The agenda, pa I'm sorry, the notes pass as written. So moving on to agenda item number two for possible action. This is uh, conditional use permit CU-21-270, resolution number 1203 from T-Mobile West LLC uh, in the property of 901 Adams Boulevard. This is a public hearing on an application for a conditional use permit in the H uh, hospital zone to allow a new wireless communication tower at a height of 75 feet pursuant to section 1127.A of the city code. Uh, city staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the applicant, I believe, is present and you'll have the chance to um, ask questions of Ms. O'Loughlin, you know, after this presentation. The applicant is requesting permission to install a 75 foot tall cellular communication tower on the Boulder City Hospital property and the hospital has provided permission for them to do that. Public utility facilities are allowed in any zone of the city subject to the restrictions of that zone. This property is in the city's H hospital zone where the height limit is 25 feet. However, the code allows for exceptions to height limits and what it specifies for uses such as towers and antennas is that if they will be over 35 feet, that requires approval by the Planning Commission by means of a conditional use permit, which is what this request before you is. In terms of other similar requests, 
all other existing cell towers in the city are actually on city owned properties. And um, they're pretty much all existing cell towers on city land. That's all in two different zones, one called the S study zone and others are our, what we call our G government zones. And there are no height restrictions in those zones. Therefore, all the more recent cell towers on city land would have not had to come before the planning commission um, there's an addendum to the staff report, which men mentioned some older cases, which did, but it's been many years. For a point of reference for this particular area by the hospital, the steel um, electric transmission poles along Buchanan are 90 feet tall, and the wooden poles along Adams in this area are between 65 and 70 feet tall, and they're gonna be replaced with steel poles between 75 and 78 feet in height. For this property, um, the land uses in the immediate south and west are also zoned hospital and occupied by medical office buildings and the Homestead Nursing Home. To the east and north are single family homes. And based on the submitted plan drawing, in terms of where the cell tower would be located, whoops, oh, sorry. It will be to the southeast of the corner of the hospital building and, nope, nope, we don't have the, that's the only map I put on here. Okay, southeast corner of the hospital building. And at that location, it will be more than 200 feet from the nearest single family um, homes to the east and the nursing home to the south. The design provided for the tower is a monopole um, and it's shown here with antenna panels at the top, although the applicant had submitted a letter noting that the tower could also allow for other carriers to co-locate their antennas on this structure. So there are, could potentially be more antennas on the structure if this does get approved. With regard to staff review comments, this was routed to various departments. Um, the only concern noted was by the city's airport manager and she had recommended that the applicants submit their proposal to the FAA due to the presence of the hospital's private helipad on the site. The property is not otherwise within the airport overlay zone, which would restrict height. Um, the applicant has indicated that they will file a request for the airspace analysis to the FAA. There's the potential that the FAA could require certain marking and lighting of the proposed tower to make it more visible or alternatively deny the request. And the resolution attached to the staff report, should the Planning Commission approve it, contains a condition that the tower will need to comply with all codes and requirements of the city and any other governing agency, including the FAA. Regard, um, regarding the safety of wireless towers and antennas, the staff report, um, the backup includes an excerpt of frequently asked questions from the FCC website, and I have extra copies of that here in case any members of the audience would like to see that. Um, concluding attached to the um, report is the draft resolution with those um, conditions as noted, in addition to some other ones, the standard language for resolutions. And so with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions, although the applicant is also president should you have questions of her. Turn it over to the commission for any questions you might have of city staff. Seeing none, thank you, Susan. Um, is the applicant here? Ah, very good. Whoop. I'm sorry, I'm just checking Gina O'Loughlin. I'm sorry. Is Gina O'Loughlin the applicant? No, I don't know any. No, that's who we're calling up right now is the applicant. The, when the public hearing is open, then you'll be able to comment. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, good evening. Good evening. Um, so as stated, I'm here on behalf of T-Mobile, uh, the applicant. Uh, who's proposing a 75-foot monopole at 901. Sorry, excuse me. Can you speak into the microphone? You can move it. Yeah. Um, they're, 
They're proposing a 75-foot monopole at 901 Adams Boulevard, which is at the Boulder City Hospital. Uh, the site was initiated at the request of the hospital to provide better coverage. Uh, and the proposal complies with staff recommendations for the conditional use permits. And I'm happy to answer any questions, any further questions. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, Paul? I do. Uh, yes, thank you. I, um, I do have a couple. Um, when in your planning process, um, do you give consideration for what I would call screening of the actual equipment the, uh, that goes on the tower uh, when you're in a resident uh, going into uh, a near residential homes? We do take that into consideration. We found that um, artificial trees or stealth stealth screening actually has a larger visual uh, footprint usually than a standard monopole and the standard monopole um, is an appropriate use against the hospital backdrop we've, is what we looked at. So basically in your uh, process you didn't feel that there was a need to try to screen the antenna? Correct. Okay. Um, also the second question I have is do you um, anticipate with uh, future growth on the antenna if there's going to be additional uh, height increase in the pole? Uh, I can't speak for other carriers, but um, I, I do know that the 75 feet is a, pr a pretty standard uh, height for monopoles. Um, and the, we did include a coverage map that shows um, where that height would provide the coverage needed at that height to the surrounding areas. So in other words, in your planning process, you don't really look forward uh, as to what growth might you might anticipate, which might then dictate a higher antenna? Well, with the 75 foot tower, we do believe um, that that provides plenty of space for co-location of other carriers. Mr. Chairman? If there were a request in the future to raise the height, if this were approved at 75 feet, it would have to return for a new public hearing to the Planning Commission. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'm done. Anyone else on the commission have? Uh, thank you, Mr. Marvin. Go ahead. Um, one of the questions I had was... One of the questions I had was pertaining to the uh, <clears throat> chart that you have for the coverage, intended coverage, and what it looks like approximately is it runs down Buchanan um, about maybe to uh, the golf course there roughly, and then over to the east over to Georgia. Let me grab a copy of it. I don't have it sitting right here in front of me. Well, that, that's all right. It was just, that was the targeted area that showed the comparison in terms of coverage and the need. And it looked to me like there wasn't a great deal of difference between that area and perhaps some of the areas to the north and the east, and I don't know, at least in, in the chart. So that, that was one, just one question I had. Um, a second question is, uh, there was an alternative location, and this, of course, wouldn't be for you to answer, but I was wondering uh, if the city had any awareness that one of the designated areas was, uh, I believe, the ball field area as an alternative site for a tower. Does anybody know? Could you repeat that question? Well, if you look at the, the, the map in there, you'll see that there's a, it identifies the area where the baseball fields is an alternative area for a microwave tower. And what was your question about that? And the that? question is um, why that area wasn't something that was even considered uh, in the process. Um, this map, the map called the current cell tower locations, which also, as you noted, the red areas noted, other potential sites. Those are other city properties mm -hmm. that we, we provided this map to the applicant some months ago, initially <clears throat> showing them other possible alternative locations. Okay. 
they chose not to pursue those, and I believe actually they're, they've got some explanation about that in the letter they submitted, and they chose to move forward with this request. Thank you. Um, one of the other questions that I had was that uh, I think you received a comment. We received a comment from somebody that was in support of uh, the microwave tower, but they weren't in that location that's designated in the map in terms of the coverage. And so I was wondering if um, that is the limitation of the coverage uh, for this particular tower, is that area that's south and east over to Georgia and down perhaps down uh, to the golf course there and pretty much the sister uh, streets area. Um, we could always have the engineers run another propagation map to uh, see where the coverage reaches to, as that's not information I have readily available at this time. I, if I may, Chris Wenner, also representing the applicant T-Mobile. I'm sorry, we need your name? I'm sorry, Chris Wenner, 4850 West Aquendo, also with Spectrum, Spectrum representing the applicant T-Mobile. And I'm sorry, your last name was Winter? Wenner, W-E-N-E-R. Thank you. So the reason, the, re, the reason from a radio frequency perspective, the, the need basically centered around the hospital. That was the request from the hospital was to improve the coverage. At that 75 foot height, it will generally cover those areas to the south and east that you're talking about. The signals propagate and they carry. And the way to think about the way the radio frequencies work, it's kind of like sprinklers in your yard. You want the water to kind of just touch each other or not overlap because otherwise the frequencies inter interfere with each other. <clears throat> um, that was one of the reasons why the um, suggested candidate to the north and east from this location wouldn't have been appropriate because it was too close to the existing T-Mobile sites. So that's really why the, this location was selected because it was a center on the, on the area of poor coverage. But it will get that area to the south and the east that you're, that you're looking at. Thank you. You're welcome. I do have one other question, though, uh, for, uh, regarding uh, the uh, hospital. Um, in, in the uh, application materials from the hospital and, and, and from uh, T-Mobile, uh, the reference is made to the critical communications for the hospital and how that relates. And I was just wondering what the enhancement is there in terms of that factor with this tower, how does that affect the communication for the hospital? Just so that, that's, it's to improve the um, communications within the hospital. Hospitals oftentimes like uh, casino, casinos or other big buildings that have thicker concrete walls, there's lots of the x-ray facilities that are in the hospitals, they block the radio signal. So oftentimes coverage within hospitals is, is very poor. Um, many larger hospitals, like in the Las Vegas metro area, they have distributed in-building systems, basically a cell tower inside the hospital to make sure the signal gets everywhere. But that's the purpose of this tower, basically, is to improve the coverage overall for the T-Mobile users within mm, thank the hospital. You. Um, so if I get what you just said uh, correctly, are you saying that the hospital could devise a plan to internally improve their signal without impacting the view of all the residents and the rest of the town? Yes, it is feasible, but this is also gonna serve the areas where there's a lack of coverage to the south and east. So this, ser this serves everybody in addition to the hospital. Do, do you know how many uh, Boulder City residents that will improve service for? Um, I can't give you exact numbers, but we can dig that out for you. And so do, would you know how many um, would be impacted by the view? Um, I can't answer that off the top of my head without okay. doing abuse jet analysis. Thank you. I have a question. Um, so somebody mentioned that we're pending an FAA um, clearance from for the hill of had. Would that be something that if it came back negatively, we would not build the tower? Correct. That was a, that was a condition of the approval. Okay. We did we did run the preliminary study, which showed it pa which showed it passed. If it, if it gets approved by the city, then we submit it formally. And then if it does not pass, that's a condition of approval. So it would not pass. Thank you. Any further questions for the applicant? 
Mr. Chair, yes. One, one brief question. Uh, what's the duration of the agreement between the hospital <clears throat> and uh, T-Mobile? Uh, the initial term would be for 20 years with uh, options to extend after that 20 years. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's bring it back. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, this is a public hearing. If anyone would like to be heard on this matter, uh, please step forward and state your name. <clears throat> My name is Russell Nixon. I live at 1312 Gloria Lane in Boulder City, uh, directly next to the new uh, um, tower that's proposed. Two things. I don't want this thing if, um, adversely affecting our um, property values. If someone wants to buy my property, I don't want to have to uh, worry about people looking out behind and seeing this tower. Um, I just don't think it's appropriate. Is there any other place in the community that you can put this that would be a, as effective as, as the uh, location? Um, number one, and number two, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's it's hard to do under this, uh, but I, I just don't feel that it's appropriate to have this force upon us when we don't have any say so. This here is a public hearing, granted, and this is our only say so. Um, I, I just don't think, and even if they put it on the other side of the property, away from housing, would be even better than what we have now and what we're proposing. I think that's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Bill Dietrapani. Uh, I live at 1314 Gloria Lane, which is, is right behind where the, uh, where the tower is supposed to be built. Uh, let me back up a little bit. Back. In the early 70s, a lot of that property next to the hospital was zoned commercial, not residential or anything else. Is that still zoned for uh, drug stores, medical buildings, and so on? And here they are putting up a tower that has nothing to do with um, the property designations. Anybody? Nobody knows about this. We're really not allowed to answer questions from up oh. here. This is during the public comment period. We're not really allowed to okay. answer questions. Um, I don't know that we actually know the answer ourselves. Yeah, maybe you better check it out. Um, but uh, it's an eyesore for us. I've lived in this house since uh, 1973. And... Uh, it's been fine. The hospital is, everything's clean. They keep the properties clean. The elevation of the hospital doesn't hurt us at all. But um, if this tower goes in, it's going to be terrible. Like, like he said, the, uh, the values of our homes, um, the eyesore that it's going to create. Are they going to put uh, pineapples and bananas on the, on the tower? Uh, I don't know. What's, what's going to happen with that? Um, we need to know the people who, and this is a big deal for me and the rest of the people that are here to comment on this uh, issue. Um, I recommend, since we have the option of them putting it in, but inside the hospital, that's, uh, I think that's a good idea. We don't want to see this thing. Maybe you could put it further south in town. Um, along the uh, golf course, I think someone said, or baseball field. But in a residential area, that's not good. Put it out on the highway, put it out in the desert, but not near my house. Thank you. Any further comments on uh, this issue? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing on 
We need to open it up to the public that's oh, calling in. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting that uh, we have we have folks potentially watching. Uh, once again, public uh, comment on agenda item number two, cell tower at 901 Adams. Um, public comment period is open. If someone wishes to call in with a comment, the number is 702-589-9629. And again, we'll provide one minute to address the lag. In Okanga, I live on um, Armada Place, and I'm quite a distance um, uphill from the tower. Ma'am, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but could you turn the yeah. sound down on your yeah, device? I'm, I'm back. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, and the the um, when I look out my kitchen window. I'm seeing the top of the light posts on Adams. I'm seeing some of the power poles, and I'm assuming that this tower is going to be at least that tall, if not maybe taller. So I'm going to be looking right out my windows at it, at the top of it, which I think is probably the least attractive <laughs> part. But um, I just wanted to mention this, that the, the people uphill um, are impacted. I'm practically off the edge of the the area that shows on that map in the mailing. But um, anyway, that I'm concerned. I, I would hate to have to look at the top of a cell tower along with all the other things that have gone up out that way from where I am. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give it another 15 seconds in case anyone else would like to uh, call in. The number is, of course, on the screen if you're streaming this meeting. Hearing no more, we'll bring the public comment period to a close on this item and open it up to motions and or deliber deliberation by this body. But before we do that, perhaps, we've had a, heard a couple of questions and I'd kind of like to uh, see if we could once again call the applicant up. Is that appropriate? Could I get the applicants, both of you, to come on up again, please? Maybe we'd just like to reiterate a couple of questions. Um, so we've just heard some comments, of course, in opposition to putting up the 75-foot tower. Um, during the earlier discussion, you had mentioned that some hospitals um, have interior cell towers. Um, what, that would be one question. I'd like to uh, maybe discuss the viability of that for this group. Um, second question, would the, you know, I realize that the intent is to serve not only the hospital's needs, but the needs of really a fairly large portion of the community, a rather high density portion of the community as well. And I hate to lose that benefit um, and perhaps you could discuss in a moment's time if there are other options or whether or not a in-hospital cell device would provide any benefit outside the hospital. Thank you. Um, and, and, and that's a great question. And in, in, in the answer to that, they're, they're called a distributed antenna system. And basically they work, the, the in-building systems aren't going to provide coverage outside of the building. And that was a, that's also the reason for the height on this tower is that that area, there's generally the um, coverage is not as good as it is in closer proximity to the towers to the north. If you look at the map that was provided with the master plan, most of the network is to the north of this location. So the, area, the farther you are from a tower, the poorer throughput you get, the poorer your speeds are. 
the poor your data down that your download is. So that area that um, um, Commissioner Marvin that you referenced to the south and east, that's farthest away from any of the existing facilities. So the height of the tower allows the signal to propagate further to cover all those residences and all those rooftops in the area as well. So like, like typically, um, like where they're in, in building system in a hospital, the macro network, the tower network is built around it, but because so much of the capacity is being used up by the residents and due to the size of the buildings, the signal's not really making it into the building. That's the, the reason for the in-building systems. This, this tower serves two purposes. It's for the hospital and to cover the rest of those rooftops. I see. So um, kind of thinking, I don't know, out of the box, um, is there any opportunity to move the location of this tower to perhaps, I don't know if the terms co-locate or to put it on one of the existing 90-foot power poles that run adjacent to Buchanan Boulevard. Um, and I would also recognize that we do have a, a row of 90-foot power poles and a row of what will soon be 65 to 75-foot power poles along Adams. Um, is there any way to locate this in, in maybe a slightly different location? There are um, there's there are scenarios, and I'm not I'm not sure if those power poles are NV Energy or not. Um, there are scenarios where NV Energy will allow antennas to be mounted to the poles, but they go below the lowest energized conductor. So on a 90-foot pole, then you have the conductor, the antennas are lower. And, and using that sprinkler analogy, again, the lower the antennas are, the less the signal carries. It doesn't propagate as well. Um, so it, it is a possibility. Um, we'd have to do a bunch of study on it to see if it would work. Because generally, the, like on, um, in the Las Vegas metro area along the 215, there's antennas that are mounted to those 120-foot steel poles. And the center lines on those things are about 35 feet, which you know, barely gets you over the top of the rooftops of two-story homes that are like at 24, 25 feet. So generally, the coverage of them on the power poles is lower. But um, off the top of my head, I don't know exactly where the conductor is on these poles. And if they're not NV Energy, if it's, yeah, if they're like maybe going down somewhere else, I don't know whoever the owner is of them if they, uh, if they allow that use. I appreciate the city that. operates the electrical system in Boulder City, so you need to check with the Public Works Department. Okay, so yeah, I, I don't know if they would be available or not. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, a, a comment and a question. <clears throat> um, probably any of those, the all of the distribution on Adams would uh, uh, run you into some more constraining issues relative to residential. Uh, so that's my comment. My question uh, uh, to the applicants is, uh, as I understand this, and maybe I'm wrong, you, the hospital uh, as a, a nonprofit is going to have a lease agreement and have a fee uh, uh, that uh, they will receive for the use of the tower by your company. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, from T-Mobile, yes. They pay a monthly rental correct. through the hospital. So there's that uh, relationship that uh, wouldn't exist uh, for the nonprofit hospital if it was located somewhere else. So basically the question is, is it really a better location relative to the coverage that's needed and relative to the residential impact? And uh, I'm assuming that that's been looked at, but uh, if that's not the case, and I think that uh, it seems to be the best fit. Very good. Any further questions of the applicant while we've got them? Well, I just want to make a quick comment in relation to Commissioner Marvin's comment about the lease agreement with the hospital. Uh, I spoke with one of the uh, members of the board down there at the hospital about this uh, just to get their opinion on it. And um, if I'm quoting him correctly, he said that the income that would be generated by T-Mobile to the hospital is a fart in a windstorm. 
Um, so uh, this is not a monetary issue as far as how the how much this is going to help the hospital. So it's more of a coverage issue, and so. It, 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 yet relative to the revenue that the hospital operates with, it's, it's similar with the, the city-owned towers, the amount of revenue. It's, it's equivalent to what the city is getting paid for their towers. So I mean, it, it adds up over time. There's a value to it. But compared to the broader revenue or funds that the hospital deal with, it's not a, it's not a huge dollar amount. All right. Well, thank you. Um, thank you to both of you. I appreciate you coming back up here and answering. Oops. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, so let's bring it back to this esteemed group and comments and or motions. Um, just a comment. My concern here is the only thing I've heard, I think there was one in the packet for everything else has been against from the citizens, but my b biggest concern was there was no information on exactly how many people this is going to help outside the, the hospital itself, where the hospital seems like there's another alternative um, compared to what others have said. I just don't know if anybody else ha had any other information. Um, I know you, uh, Matt had talked to somebody at the hospital, but if there was any other information, I'm not for this uh, based on what's been provided so far. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments or motion? Well, we can make a motion and vote A or nay on it. And, uh, yeah, just uh, I guess the, the the main comment I would probably uh, raise here is uh, goes back to what a couple of the residents said about the uh, impact on the uh, homes within the area, which of course always when there's a thing like a tower or something, then there's questions as to what that could do to value. Um, I do know, of course, many towers throughout areas have uh, uh, screening put on them. Um, I, I'm not going to say they're good or bad, um, but it is a consideration um, that uh, might help mitigate uh, at least some of the concern as to uh, how it would look. Um, so I don't know if that's something we should look at or just uh, I'll just make that comment on it. Thank you. Anyone else wish to? Make a comment or a motion on this item. Uh, the public comment period has been closed. Have you considered any other uh, Okay. <laughs> the public comment period was closed. It's, it's up at the commission now. This is further discussion by the commission. Can we answer that question? I mean, one of you answer that question. I, it would seem like there would have been other considerations, but I don't Certainly know any that. commission question from the commission uh, staff can respond to. Thank you. Yeah. Were any other alternative uh, locations considered in this uh, in this cell tower um, placement, as far as you know? Well, again, with any type of cell tower locations, we always encourage co-location opportunities with existing structures to minimize the number of structures within the community. And I, as uh, uh, Susan had mentioned earlier, we had identified other potential locations, and the applicant has chose to advance with this one for your consideration. Thank you. Would any of the commissioners like to make a motion on this? Um, there's opportunity for the hospital to get better cell coverage. Um, sounds like we've discussed to do something internally that doesn't affect the neighbors. Um, 
However, I'd uh, I'd be curious if um, if screening with landscaping close to Gloria, um, the backside of of the housing there, if looking at ground level with trees up close, are they still going to be able to see the 75 foot tower? Could it be screened effectively? I don't know. Um, uh, I mean, I could be swayed either way on this. I don't have any strong feelings one way or the other. Thank you. Yeah, my, my personal view is I do know that this part of the community does suffer from lack of really, really good cell coverage or even adequate cell coverage to some degree. Um, I don't have all that great of cell coverage at times at, at my location, but um, so I think that is a valid concern for the city of Boulder City. I think the alternate locations, perhaps at the ballparks, might have less it would be perhaps in less less proximity to um, direct proximity to residents, but it seems that the hospital has a need, and I'm thinking that it might be a notable expense to the hospital to put an internal net, um, and it seems like the community may have a need. Um, but I'm kind of like you. And go either way. However, we do need a motion on this item. Well, I'd like to make one more comment. I okay. mean, frankly, um, the applicant uh, really has expressed the issue that the tower is there are twofold. Yes, it helps the hospital. I don't believe that's the main purpose. It is a important purpose. The, the real important issue is coverage within the community. And I think we all operate with cell phones day in and day out. And no matter what, you can hit an area and it's bad. Um, companies are trying to provide the best service they can. So I think our decision is literally, is it necessarily a bad location? Um, since I'm not hearing other ones are necessarily a better option. Um, frankly, when I look at the, where it's going on, the, on that piece of property for the hospital, it's, uh, it's a barren piece of land. It's already with a bunch of buildings. It's, um, it's next to a property, uh, residences, which is why I raised the issue about perhaps screening. Might be a way to just mitigate that immediate eyesore that you see. But given that it's on a piece of property that's already basically commercial, it becomes less of an issue in my mind. So. I agree. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it gets back to one of my earlier questions, and it had to do with the critical care issue and uh, whether or not the hospital uh, board has uh, wrestled with that as a financial thing or uh, how significant the need is there and also what the measure of improvement is with, with the cell tower. and don't really have an answer to that. But I think that's an important factor. Yeah, I agree. Any other comments before I make go ahead, Mr. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there um, a way that we could delay the vote on this until we were provided additional information as to how many citizens uh, this would benefit and whether it's truly needed because I don't feel like there's been a representation of that um, and I don't know anybody on that back side to even inquire with that lives in that general neighborhood. Um, I would like, th I think this is kind of a big deal of where it's going and the potential eyesore that it is and I would prefer to actually understand how many citizens would benefit versus um, those that would have an impacted view. And if there were anything that could be done to help screen that um, might 
change my current opinion, which would be to deny this personally. Thank you. Um, Mr. D. Teresa. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, I I really don't uh, think there's any way to screen a 75 foot tower. Um, so in my mind, it's a question of aesthetics versus, uh, you know, public good. And uh, I, I doubt if we had another hearing that people would show up in favor of a cell tower. I mean, people just don't do that. Um, it, my opinion right now is that, um, that I'm in favor of it. And I understand that well, the residents in the area um, and their objections, but you know, cell towers to me are not, I mean, this is a single 75 foot cell tower. It's not a big development of, uh, of radio towers. Um, I don't think it's, it's really gonna be that aesthetically unpleasing. Um, so, and, and I think that, you know, asking them to go back and re-engineer it and find a new location is kind of uh, out of our bailiwick here. You know, we should vote, either vote it up or vote it down. So that's my opinion. Thank you. I'm, so, I'm sorry, city staff, were you going to uh, say something, Tammy? I'm sorry, I thought I heard you. Uh, um, okay, very good. Then I'm gonna make a motion unless Okay. Um, once again, Matt, you've uh, stated it well. We have really a resolution before us, and that would be a resolution to pass, you know, to ha have the cell tower. And I'm sorry, I'm looking. There it is. Um, so I'm going to make a uh, make a motion that we pass resolution number 1203 as written. Um, and I have to agree that I think this is hospital and public good for a larger area. And that's, um, so that's the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Um, do we have any comment on the motion? Is there any further comment on this agenda item? Um, hearing none, let's call to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Okay. Motion passes. Move on to agenda item number three. Agenda item number three, um, once again. Agenda item number three is AM 21-355, resolution number 1204, Fred Nasiri, tract 112, 11.65 acres east of Via Grande Way and Stone Canyon Road, a public hearing and recommendation to the City Council on a proposed amendment to the zoning map to rezone the subject property from R180, single family residential to R120, single family residential. And once again, I'll uh, remind all that the applicant, Mr. Nasiri, has in fact asked for a continuation. That continuation is scheduled for November 17th, uh, 2021, here this coming November. Um, we will hold a full public hearing at that time um, as well. And um, at this time, because of the continuation, we're not, I presume we're not gonna hear a staff report, is that correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, you have a disclosure um, by a commissioner that needs to be... Sorry, yes. Um, we do have a disclosure from uh, Commissioner Bioski. Yes, um, I'd like to um, make the following disclosure. 
as, uh, in accordance with Nevada ethics rules, which require that I disclose that I live in uh, Lake Mead View States as a uh, homeowners association. I am the president of the association, or of the board of directors. Um, but I need to state that I do not have a pecuniary interest in this project. I believe that the independence of my judgment on this item or that of a reasonable person in my situation would not be material effect, materially affected by my work for the uh, association and will therefore participate in deliberating and voting on it. Thank you very much. Um, so at this time, in light of the fact that we'll not have a staff report on this item, I would, as I mentioned earlier, open up to public hearing to anyone else who would like to be heard on this matter tonight. And again, I would remind that there will be a full public hearing on November 17th, and any and all who wish to be heard on the matter would also be provided an opportunity to be heard at that time. Um, so with that, I'll open the public hearing. Uh, very good. Yes, the, o the only comment I have is that on the 17th of November... Could you please state your name for the oh, record? excuse me. Daryl Fruing, 109 Stone Canyon Road. Uh, the 17th of November, is that correct? Uh, yes, I the believe meeting. so. Correct? Yeah, thank you, yes. My wife and I have... Uh, health reasons, we will not be able to be here on the 17th. We'll be back in California. And it's something I'm very disappointed that Mr. Nassari did not show up since, you know, it's his request. And we have uh, come here, several of us have. Uh, so the bottom line is, is that I certainly want to state we are against, vehemently against this. So in our absence, that's my statement, vehemently against changing the zoning from R-180 to R-120. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And once again, as a public hearing, I would like to re, uh, re-display the phone number for those watching or streaming away from this location. Again, the number is 702-589-9629, and we'll give folks a minute to call in. And if there's anyone else here in the audience who would like to be heard on this matter, we certainly can continue it here as well. And seeing or hearing no comments via telephone um, and seeing no one here in the audience, I'll close the public hearing. And Mr. Chairman, just for point of clarification, you would be uh, keeping the public hearing open until the continuation on November 17th. Uh, very good, that's true. So we're going to continue the hearing. The hearing apparently remains open until November 17th. And one thing I did forget, and unfortunately many of, of your neighbors have left, if you have a chance to see them, please um, encourage them to contact city staff if you have further questions. Um, and there are, of course, many ways to write in comments as, as we've seen today. Um, please feel free to take advantage of those opportunities as well. Um, so not closing the public hearing, um,
I think that ends the discussion on this topic for tonight. Um, and so we're going to move on to agenda item number four. And let me bring up my agenda. And if I could, I'm going to at least say thank you to those in the audience who have taken their time tonight. So thank you all very much. So this is agenda item number four for possible action. City of Boulder City, additional energy resource zone area, town site. Uh, matters pertaining to modifying the master plan and the zoning map to increase area for solar development. And this has uh, four parts. And I presume staff is staff report will take care of part number A and then we'll go to the public hearing. And staff? Thank you. Oh, sorry, this is a request to um, modify the master plan and zoning map to increase area for solar development in what we call the town site area. The property is, um, the re subject area for rezoning is approximately 115 acres located west of Highway 95 and north and west of land already zoned for energy use. Um, and to summarize the uh, okay, agenda, um, the first part of the agenda relates to the master plan request. And the state law for a master plan request has similar requirements for noticing the public with regard to um, a rezoning, but it's slightly different than the requirements for a rezoning. Whereas what we do for just a rezoning, for instance, the case previous on the agenda, is that the notices do get mailed out to all property owners within 750 feet, notifying them of a hearing. For a master plan amendment, um, NRS requires that the applicant hold a neighborhood meeting and notify property owners within 750 feet of that neighborhood meeting. For this request, the city is the applicant. And so therefore, the notice that went out um, no, you know, advertised the neighborhood meeting here at City Hall for the master plan in addition to the public hearing for the master plan and the rezoning request. So essentially, since the city is the applicant, as I introduce and dis describe this item to you, that will constitute the purposes of the neighborhood meeting because those same residents were um, notified and invited to this for that same purpose. Okay, with that being said, the commission should be familiar with this project because as recently as May of this year, you looked over this same particular area as part of what the city calls the land management plan process. And so essentially to recap that, the city is already leasing um, a little over a thousand acres of land to Townsite Solar LLC for a utility scale solar energy development, which is under construction. However, as discussed with you back in May, for amendment to the land management process list, there's now a proposal to add an about an additional 100 acres to that project site. So since the Planning Commission reviewed that in May and then the sub City Council subsequently added it to the land management process list, that means the lease for this purpose can move forward and therefore doing the master plan amendment and zoning map amendment are the next steps as part of this process. So the maps are included in your packet and also on screen um, because the highway right of way runs through part of that. The total acreage for the proposed master plan and zoning amendment maps runs to about 115 acres. And there's information in the staff report regarding available utilities in the area. Um, as the report notes that this is not within the area near the dry lake bed. You know, it's not within the desert tortoise habitat area. There are no um, major utility concerns for this request. And if the commission has any commission, uh, excuse me, questions, staff will attempt to answer them. Very good, thank you, Susan. We appreciate that. Um, any questions of staff? 
lit. Um, Susan, I may have missed this, but do we know what the lease rate is going on the on this particular property? Um, well, number one, no, I don't know. And number two, unfortunately, that's really not a pertinent question for our master plan and rezoning hearing. I, I guess uh, what I'm getting at is I've had my fill of all the solar that we have here in Boulder City, and I'm not sure that the money outweighs the uh, preservation of open land. Um, it seems to be a money grab from the solar companies at this point. So that's my personal opinion. Hey, um, yes, Mr. D. Um, I've, I've been, I've spent a lot of time in the El Dorado Valley and I'm familiar with this plot of land and the town site um, solar project that's existing. I think it's actually aesthetically pleasing. Um, I think town site turned out to be a, a good partner with, with the city. And um, that piece, that plot of land, um, there are two points I'd like to make. One is that it's, it's not usable for, for much, much else than solar, unless you wanted to develop it for commercial reasons, because it's right on the highway. So uh, I'm definitely in favor of this. Um, for, for no other reason that uh, putting solar in might keep other things out. And uh, that makes me happy. <laughs> I'm still worried about development at the intersection of I-11 and 95, and this is close to that area. So uh, I'd be very happy to see more solar down there. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, let me pause for just a second here. We, well, right, that's, that's where I was gonna go. Um, we're still looking for questions of the city, and then um, we'll be going to the applicant if they are present and let them speak, and then we can bring it back to ourselves and, and deliberate. And, and Mr. Chairman, you also do have a public hearing with this one as well. Thank you, good point. Um, any other questions for Susan or the city staff? Hearing none, is the applicant present? And if so, would you please step forward and state your name? Uh, my name is Linda Bullen, B-U-L-L-E-N, and I'm here on behalf of Schuyler Energy Resources, LLC, that brought this matter to the city. As was indicated by um, the city staff earlier, the, the city is the actual applicant. I just want to be clear about that. But I'm here on behalf of Schuyler to answer any questions or try to answer any questions that you have. I have uh, one question. Um, when this originally came before us in May, I was one of those voting against it. Um, and really my sole reason um, is as we look at the map, um, town site uh, currently extends to a, on the um, east side of the highway, it extends northward to a boundary, right? And as you cross the highway, this parcel, as it was described in May and currently, extends northward, uh, maybe 100 yards. And believe it or not, that really is my objection. I'm a little bit like Nate. I, I've seen we've got a lot of solar here. Um, and I personally would like to preserve that interchange area for possible commercial development if that ever were to come come forward. Um, and Matt, I, I certainly would also acknowledge and agree with your point that, you know, something here that we can control currently is better than the unknown in many cases, and, and that concerns me as well. Um, sorry, I guess I'm going off on comments already. Um, so, the question is, why that jog northward on the west side of the highway? Um, and by that, I guess the uh, north of the, what I see is the east-west line. 
Uh, yes, thank you. I know that's difficult. For I didn't explain it very well, but you're right. The east-west line forming the northern boundary of the current town site development on the east side of the of the highway, and then as we go to the proposed parcel, which is on the west side of the highway, that northern boundary is northward by I don't know the distance. Sure. Well, and all I can say is that um, e these projects, contrary to uh, uh, perhaps common belief, it, are not as profitable as, as they once were, certainly. Uh, the price of energy has gone down appreciably, at least on the end of the developers. So this is an attempt to, to just maximize the, the available land. And this layout was... The you know the result of a process of a lot of conversations with city staff and and um, and engineers and so forth. So. Okay. Um, which brings up the question of when we talk about profitability and you know that obviously raises a question about what happens if these were to become unsustainable. Um, in other words, you were making no profit and had to pull out. What happens then to that land? Well, first of all, these are the subject of long, before they're built, they have long-term power purchase agreements in place. Uh -huh. And that's locking them in for a minimum, of, you know, it depends, they vary, but 20 to 30, 35 years. Ah, okay. So, so this isn't a, chan a situation of here today, gone next next year at this time? Definitely not. Thank you. Um, any other questions for the applicant? Um, yeah, I guess I'll keep my comments till later. Thank uh, you, but Mr. Marvin. Refresh me again on the, the duration of the contract for that lease. Well, for this subject area, there isn't a lease at this time. It, it's it would be a ne at least to be negotiated with the city um, if if all of the approvals are obtained. It would be renegotiated at what at what juncture? No, uh, it not re there is no lease to renegotiate at this point. This is just for the subject area that we're talking about. For okay, this. so the lease agreement itself has no duration. There isn't a lease agreement on this land. Oh, uh, okay. If the, that's yet, if I could on the land. I'm sorry. If I could interject, I apologize. Um, just to make it, you know, once again, kind of remind us. So we're looking at a proposed amendment to the master plan, just simply to vote A or A whether we think this is an appropriate use of that parcel of land. Once, if that process goes through if we vote both that and the um, zoning map modification yeah, yeah, that would come here, into play. then all of that would, would take place. Well let me let me ask it another way. Uh, maybe staff can help. What are the duration of the lease agreements on the other property? Typically uh, solar leases are uh, 40 to 50 year leases. That's what they are on, on the ones here in Boulder City? Correct. 40 to 50? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thanks. Do we have any other questions for the representative from Schuyler? Seeing none, I will open the public hearing on this matter. If anyone wishes to be heard, please step forward. Or if someone would like to call in, uh, public comment is currently open. Number is 702-589-9629. And we'll leave the lines, or we'll wait for a, a minute to allow you to call in.
Hearing no public comments, we'll close the public comment, uh, the hearing, public hearing portion of this agenda item and move it back to the commission for um, discussion and a motion. Would anyone like to start the discussion? I think I've made my thoughts clear. <laughs> my apologies. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm going to be asking. I'm going to say a couple things, and I've probably said this before, not in a long time, only because I do understand how things go. First of all, I I really do believe in solar, and I do believe what we're doing over there is probably the right thing. Um, where my issue is, and I've expressed this before to uh, staff, it has to do with how the master plan is being amended piece by piece. I contend, and we've never done it correctly, but we have had a major change in this whole city with the I-11 corridor. Um, and again, we only piecemealed one look at the uh, interchanged. But we never have opened it up to just say, people, we are now expanding beyond the city limits. What do you want to do? You know, if they want, for example, I'm not saying one way or the other what's right or wrong. I'm just saying, instead of being hit here, there, I could even go the past one that we are deliberating another time. Um, we should be looking at and giving the city, excuse me, the residents, all the residents, the opportunity to weigh in. So yes, as you've explained, we've set it up where there'll be a little workshop, 750, people notified 750 feet away, whatever. The problem is it's the whole city that's being affected by how that whole area is being developed. So um, I came out of a community, two communities in uh, different states, and they approach their master plans a lot different than the city has. I, you know, I can't change that. I'm not going to say it right or wrong, but all I can tell you is all the cities I dealt with is if there was any kind of a change, a major change, they revisited on a major effort. It wasn't a, it wasn't a small effort to readdress the whole master plan because it gave the whole city input into it because you then conduct multiple workshops. You have different mechanisms by which you go about it. So I'm going to stop there because I'm just, honestly, it's just venting my own feelings and it's not going to change anything. But overall, as far as the project goes, it is consistent with what we've been doing. I frankly don't have an issue with it. Um, well, as I stated in the wrong place earlier, <laughs> um, one of the main reasons that I would definitely support this is that that area, the subject area, as I'm looking at the map, it's very close to the I-11-95 intersection. And there are three which has been proposed for a few years by a former mayor and other councilmen for massive commercial development, which the people in Boulder City from I think the last election or two elections ago proved that they were totally against that. Um, there's three entities that you need for development out there in the El Dorado Valley, water, sewer, and power. Um, power is already there. All that's needed is a bit of infrastructure, um, substation, et cetera. Um, water, we've had that shoved down our throat with the pipeline to nowhere. Um, that I'm surprised nobody's been held accountable for that yet. <clears throat> and I, it probably never will happen. But the water is definitely there. And uh, as far as sewer, the Water Authority, Southern Nevada Water Authority, is still pushing to build a sub um, I'm sorry, a pumping station in the El Dorado Valley to, to pump our effluent up over the hill to connect with, uh, with, Boulder, with uh, Henderson's sewer system. Well, if you go out to Frontage Road that's across from the railroad pass, you will see that those pipelines are already under the Frontage Road, including fiber optics, natural gas, 
and they go right up to Boulder City's border at uh, Goodfellow Sand and Gravel. So the only thing left for them to get development in that area is, um, is sewer, is that pumping station. And once that starts, it's ne never gonna stop. Um, so in my opinion, there's, I really don't see any other use for that land. And uh, the more solar that we put out there, the less chance for, for commercial development. So that's why I'm in favor of it. Thank you. I have a comment. Um, I, you know, trying to enjoy the desert and you go out there and it's a, you know, it's a big sea of glass black now, you know, glass. And I, I just, I think, you know, if we could have kept it away from the highways and aesthetically pleasing, I mean, the, this new town site is um, atrocious, how you drive right through it, the dust that it makes, everything else, all that. Um, you know, we're signing leases for our children. None of us are gonna be here when these leases are done. We're, you know, we should have, in my mind, we should have sold the property and it should have gone up to vote for everybody instead of us just kind of doing these 99 and 40 year leases that um, we're kind of, I feel like we skirted around the issue. So, you know, I'm completely and totally opposed to it. I think the solar has gone too, too far, too much. I think, um, you know, if it would have been away from the highways and away from everybody where you saw them right away, you know, it, it might have been a more pleasing. I've seen some uh, farms up in Reno that they've done a really good job of keeping them off the highway. They're, they're in rural areas like, like that is, but it's not right in your face. Um, that's why, you know, I'm opposed to it, but that's my comment. Appreciate that. Uh, any additional comments? Um, I think when we talk about the future for those that will be here, one of the things that uh, you're up against in this community in the long haul is the capacity for generation in the hydro dam. I mean, they've done everything they can down there, the variable speed generation, everything put in there to squeeze what they can out of there. But the long haul on that deal is what's going to happen is your uh, bulk so, uh, power supply that you're getting uh, is going to go up. And it's going to go up significantly based on what resource you have left with that, with that reservoir. You do have capacity off of these uh, generation uh, the solar facilities that are here in town. And you will have some of that capacity in the future. And it may ultimately be a uh, long-term buffer against uh, cost of living in this town. So I support it. Uh, I guess this is a question for staff during the comment. We don't receive any of that power, do we? I, I thought last time we, we uh, litigated over uh, expansion that we, we weren't purchasing any of the power from any of those solar um, fields are we with uh, two of the solar projects we're in the negotiations for having up to five kilowatts of uh, solar and uh, Linda correct me if I'm wrong this is one of those projects the reason the city couldn't take advantage of that solar before was there wasn't battery storage um, I could go into a lot of details but it's not germane to this but yeah so there is um, up to five kilo may Thank you. Mega, <laughs> megawatts, not kilowatts. <laughs> yes, five megawatts of power that the city is under the negotiations for using for our residents. And I believe, like, peak power in the summer, um, we're using somewhere around 50 megawatts. Is that correct? As a city? I am not the uh, utilities director, but I can tell you that what I've been told is that during the winter, uh, Hoover um, pretty much provides our electrical needs. But during the summer, we rely on having to purchase power elsewhere. And so the solar opportunity will help augment that. While we're on the thread of going to city staff again, uh, Michael, do we are we looking at entering into additional um, agreements with other solar providers to increase from five to maybe ten or more? What um, does the future look like as far as the viability? 
Yeah, uncertain depending on the negotiations with any subsequent projects. Um, the uh, Black Hills is the remaining opportunities for solar, and depending on the solar provider and whether they would have battery storage, that's always a possibility. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to take a second opportunity to provide a, a comment again, as Matt says, during the appropriate time. Um, you know, I, I kind of struggle with this. I think the visual impact of the solar um, certainly is better than commercial, and, and I have always been an advocate for solar power. Um, my only concern with this particular item is simply, and I think Mr. Rudd stated it, the way you know, from my house, I can look out over the valley and see the cloud of dust that came during the construction of the existing town site, and I was absolutely astounded that we didn't have air quality issues. Um, you know, that and that the county um, entity responsible for air quality wasn't out here all the time. Um, and frankly, I think it's the way, after seeing that, I'm just a little bit surprised that, that that we could see a cloud of dust coming off a construction site when we know the construction sites for houses and all that have pretty strict guidelines. Um, that's one item. The second item is, in fact, that proximity right to the road. If there was a way to move it back further from the road, I'd be happy about it. And third would be that uh, northerly boundary and not encroaching quite as far north as it does. Um, you know, other than that, I'm absolutely in favor of solar, but, you know, the visual impact, if it could be reduced slightly for those driving through our community, our clean, green, Boulder City, you know, even if you're on Highway 11, I mean, I think we still carry that cachet. Um, but anyway, again, these are, those are personal concerns. Overall, I am very much in favor of solar, and I'm glad that we have that industry here in our valley. Um, so, with that, uh, is, are there any other comments before I call for, ask for a motion? I would just say that I agree with uh, Commissioner Biasi's sentiment that we're doing this piecemeal, and it, for me this feels like um, we keep coming back to this with, it's like death by a thousand cuts. Um, so I'm, I'm just flat out not in favor and I highly doubt I would vote in favor of any more solar on anything down the line. All right. Um, so I'd like to make a motion. So basically, we've got a resolution in front of us. We have a decision to make, and thank you very much. And so I think, so we have a master plan amendment to allow the use of solar. Um, in other words, um, to designate as manufacturing energy, and then with that, after that, if that pass, I presume it was if that passes, we would have a zoning. We would go to the zoning, is that correct? Both Maybe. items go forward to the council. Basically, it would go forward to the council the same uh, as this one does. The resolution um, for the rezoning is presuming that the master plan amendment is passed. Um, for this board tonight, as the footnote in the staff report notes, I've got alternate resolutions should the master plan resolution not be passed by a majority of five. You can recommend in favor by five or more, by four or more, or even recommend denial. Um, and even if you recommend denial of the master plan amendment, you still need to make a decision on the rezoning um, motion as well, whether or not to pass that resolution. Your recommendation either way will go forward to the city council 
and then same thing. They'll have to act on the master plan first. Now, if the city council chooses not to amend the master plan, then they will not act at all on, on the rezoning. Right. But right. they would have to amend the master plan in order to rezone the property. Yes. Um, so we'll... So do we need, I presume we would need two motions, one for each resolution, and it would make sense to me to vote first on, uh, you know, obviously take them in order, but vote separately on each item. Okay. That'd be best. Very good. Um, so I'll make a motion to pass resolution 1205 as written. Um, any comments? Before we take it, or I'm sorry. We need a, second, a second before comments, please. Do we have a second on that motion? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All in favor, please vote. This is 12, 12.05. I'm sorry? The motion is 12.05. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Resolution number 12.05 as Aye. written. Aye. Do we, has everyone who, okay, all opposed, nay. 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 And could I just confirm that was two eyes being, um, I've got Matt and Tom, and then the other five were days. Okay. Okay, that resolution. In that case, I will be providing, an, I have an alternate resolution for that recommendation of denial. Thank you. Um, next, let's uh, vote on resolution number 1206. This is a recommendation city council on an amendment to the zoning map to rezone the same acreage. Um, I make a motion to pass resolution 1206 as as written, all in favor? You need a second. I'm sorry, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second on that? Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. 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 Those resolutions, the recommendation of city council, those res resolutions would not be past. Moving on to agenda item number five, monthly progress report on development allotments. No comment. And we have one, one last opportunity for public comment. And since there's really, uh, could I see that phone number again? Uh, thank you. Uh, number to call in is 702-589-9629. And once again, we'll wait one minute. Hearing no public comments, I'll close the public comment period and close the Planning Commission meeting of September 15th, 2021.